Good morning, everyone, and thank you again. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast, and now I want to thank you so much for joining me and listening to my weekly devotional or viewing it on YouTube or on Facebook. Like I've always said, it's such a pleasure to be able to bring to you each and every week my thoughts on Bible teachings on this day. And of course, as I, be, as, as I always, before I begin, I want to introduce my partner, my brother in Christ, my friend, Donovan, and of course, thank him as what all he does to produce and edit the show, I really appreciate. So thanks again so much, Donovan. <laughs> Last week, I did part one of this wonderful parable of Jesus entitled, The Parable of the Unmerciful Servant. If you did not happen to uh, listen or view that podcast from last week, let me go ahead and one, one more time read to you what this parable is all about. It's in Matthew 18, verses 23 to 35. It goes like this. Jesus is speaking. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. Verse 30, But he refused. Instead he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged, and they went and told their master everything that had happened. Verse 32, then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have the mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. Verse 35, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Well, last week, I pointed out and focused on the enormity of our sin. Now, if you recall from last week, I read this from the NIV version. Last week, I read it from the New King James Version. And the New King James Version talks about the idea of a talent versus gold coins. And like I mentioned last week, a talent was mostly a unit of measure but most people back in those days would understand one talent as being equivalent to approximately 600 denarii. And a denarii was equivalent to an average man's one-day wage. So when you do the math, 10,000 talents would be equivalent to 60 million denarii, which is approximately 20,000 years of earnings for an average man. In other words, it's a debt then none of us would be able to repay in our lifetimes, in, even if we sold everything we would ever own, including our family. Now, as I mentioned last week, that servant in this parable is a picture of you and I, and our huge debt is our sin. God forgave that huge debt of sin through our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We must never forget the amazing mercy and grace of God in forgiving us of our insurmountable debt to him. But folks, there is a lot much, much more to this parable as well. God paid the huge price for our sin, but you and I must also never forget how much God forgives us. You see, once we accept Christ as our Redeemer and Savior, our debt of sin is completely and forgiven and forgotten by God, past, present, and future. It's not like God brings up our past sins to us and holds it as ransom over our heads. He doesn't come up to us and say, well, you owe me. I forgave you for that huge sin you did last week, but I'm not going to forgive you for the next one. God doesn't play those types of games. He doesn't negotiate future sins. God forgives totally, 
but he also forgets our sins completely. It reminds me of a story about a young nun who once claimed to have visions of Jesus in her mind, but nobody in the convent believed her. So her bishop decided to test her truthfulness, and he ordered that the next time she had this vision, she should ask Jesus what the bishop's primary sin had been before he became a believer. Only God would know that answer. So the nun agreed to do this, and she went off. Some months later, the nun returned to the convent. So the bishop went up to her and asked her if she asked Christ that question. She affirmed that she had. The bishop looked at her and said, well, what did he say? The nun looked at the bishop apprehensively and said, Christ said, and then the nun paused for a moment. He said, I don't remember. Folks, we have a God who not only forgives all our sins, the big ones and the small ones, but he also forgets them as well. God is in the forgiving business. Even after we surrendered our lives to Jesus, we still sin in our sinful nature. But God never stops forgiving us. 1 John 1, 9 says this, If we confess our, our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God is always willing and wanting to forgive us our sins because He loves us with a sacrificial and unconditional love. Folks, we must never forget that. That's something that needs to stick in our minds. And there is one last verse that I want to mention to you now. And I really would appreciate it if you could commit it to memory. Because if you do, I believe you will be blessed. It will help you to always remember how God forgives us. It's Ephesians 1 verse 7. In Ephesians 1 verse 7 it says this, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Folks, God forgives because of his amazing grace. We must never forget how much he forgives us. But another point I want to make today is the fact that we need to be imitators of Christ and forgive others. If you think about it, that's actually the essence of this parable of the unmerciful servant. After the master forgave his enormous debt, which symbolizes our sin, the story tells us that a fellow servant owed him a very small amount, probably for a much smaller sin, and this unmerciful servant refused to forgive the debt. But the interesting part of the parable, and what we need to learn this morning, is the master's reaction. If you go back to Matthew 18, verses 32 to 35, it says, Jesus says this in this parable, Then the master called the servant in. He said, you wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. Then this parable ends with this. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't understand exactly what that means. Well, here's what it means. We need, excuse me, we need to forgive others of wrongdoings to us because God forgave us of our enormous debt. But here's the problem. When you and I do not forgive others, it actually affects us worse than the wrongdoer. We are tortured in our minds and in our hearts, like the parable says, because we lose fellowship with God in this sin, and we allow all the power of unforgiveness to overtake us. We're like living in that prison from that parable, filled with anger, filled with vengeance and hatred, when God wants to bless us with peace, love, and joy. But you can't have anger and vengeance and peace and love in the same heart. So that anger of unforgiveness consumes us, so we can't feel God's joy and love. That is why forgiveness is so much highlighted in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6.12. Matthew 6.12, the New Living Translation says this, And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those 
who have sinned against us. Now the world will look at you and say, ha, revenge is king. If someone hurts you or if someone hurts your family, you go out and you hurt them worse than how they hurt you. The world teaches us that those who do not seek retribution against those who hurt us is worthless and weak. But God teaches us something very different. God teaches us in Matthew 5 that the meek will be blessed for they will inherit the earth. God teaches us in Romans 12, 19, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. And of course in Matthew 5, 44, it says this, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And there are so many examples of forgiving people that were hurt so badly by others in the Bible. Let me give you a couple examples. Joseph, in Genesis 45, forgave his brothers, although they sold him into slavery. First, they put him in a ditch, as if he was dead. Then they sold him in slavery and basically really wanted him dead. David forgave Saul in 1 Samuel 24 and 26 who tried to kill him numerous times out of rage and jealousy. And of course, in the New Testament, Stephen forgave his enemies in Acts 7, who ended up stoning him to death. And of course, Jesus, the perfect model of forgiveness, in Luke 23, 34, said from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Well, you might be thinking at this point of the podcast, yeah, well, I hear that, Pastor, but I'm not a David, I'm not a Joseph, and I'm definitely not Jesus. I realize that God forgave all my sins, but it's still hard for me to forgive and especially forget those that really hurt me. How do you expect me to do this? Let me put it this way. In the flesh, it's impossible to do. When we are seriously hurt by someone who either physically or emotionally truly hurt us, it is almost impossible to just forgive them and go on with life like it never happened. We know in our mind that it's the right thing to do, but trust me, actually doing it is very difficult. So I'm going to repeat it again. In the flesh, absolutely impossible. We want vengeance. And we want that perpetrator to feel that same hurt and pain that we do. But folks, we need to remember, we are not alone. We have Jesus who knows all those pains. We have Jesus who felt that pain in dying a sacrificial death while doing nothing wrong. We have Jesus who wants us to trust him to comfort us in times of despair. Folks, Jesus knows and feels our pain today, and he wants to be our strength. Folks, we can be a reflection of Christ and forgive others who hurt us deeply if we can surrender that hurt to God. So let us begin today and allow God to hold us up and lift us as we get rid of the anger and bitterness and truly forgive the unforgivable. God wants us to forgive. We no, not, no longer need to live in that mental prison. We can have freedom in our minds and hearts when we forgive others. We can take the power back in Christ and forgive those that have truly hurt us. I pray that this podcast has blessed you. As I mentioned before, there are so many life lessons that we can learn from the teachings of God in these parables. So I pray again that this podcast has edified you and made you think if there's that one person in your life that you may need to forgive. Dear, and let me ask, let me, let me add this. I don't even have this in my notes. Maybe there is someone out there who really is struggling with this and you're saying, you know what, Pastor, I hear you, but I can't do it. What I want to do right now, Donovan, is I want to do a prayer for those individuals that has someone in their heart that they're having a hard time forgiving. So let's pray. Will you pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we love you. And Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and paying that huge debt to us 
that we would never be able to repay. Lord, I know I need to forgive others. But Lord, we ask you to give us the strength and courage to forgive that individual that's in our heart right now. It has nothing to do that they deserve it. It's all about being obedient to your word and getting rid of that mental anguish and getting rid of that prison within us. Lord, we can't do it alone. We need your help. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you in advance for carrying us in this process because Lord, we know deep down in our heart, in Christ, we can do all things. I praise you, Lord, and I give you glory in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, continue to remind you to please read my daily devotionals on my Reflections Marina Valley Church Facebook page and sharing them with all your family and friends. Folks, you're doing it because the numbers on our Facebook page, Reflections Church, uh, in the last four or five weeks has quadrupled itself and a lot of people are sharing it and I'm getting a lot of wonderful comments on how much you're enjoying it so first of all I thank you for doing that but don't stop because I know people are being affected in a positive way by you sharing of these devotionals and of course we have our app if you have the app download each and every day these daily devotionals and of course our weekly podcast if you don't have the app then just go to your Google uh, store or go to your uh, your Apple store your uh, Google Play and download Reflections Christian Church and you can have it and listen to all these podcasts at the make it a button folks I do these devotionals and I do these podcasts because I feel it is so important that we get a taste of Jesus each and every day and just the idea of knowing that you're sharing these things and knowing that people are being lifted up that's all the that's all I ever wanted from doing these podcasts. So again, I thank you so much for doing it. Thank you so much for sharing it. And again, our goal here is to spread the good news of Jesus into our inner world. May God richly bless you and your family. Okay, that was uh, the conclusion of the merciful servant. It was. And uh, I got a couple of questions. I just want to ask you real quick. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Pastor. Is it, in the Old Testament, it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And if that is what you so desire to do, that was okay, as long as it was an equal amount of revenge mm -hmm. or whatever. Now, the New Testament comes out and you have Jesus Christ who says, you know, you should do this and be merciful and be forgiving. Um, is the Old Testament still relevant? Absolutely. Absolutely. The eye for the eye, tooth for tooth, was the idea of the, of the Israelites back in those days and dealing with the enemies of God within the pagan religions of the Canaanites, the, the Amorites, and all those Philistines and all that in regards to trying to bring people away from So you got to understand what God's reasoning for that was. His reasoning is that these people were bringing the Israelites away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. you got to remember the, who the Israelites were in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. He was his chosen people. So that the fact that they were trying to uh, exterminate all the Jews would basically take, get rid of God's plan to expand the gospel and expand mm -hmm. the Bible to all people. So yes, if they were hurting him, yeah, we got, you got to go back in there and God says you're going to have to take an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth in regards to um, protecting the, the, the Israelites' people and protecting God's word. But now in Christ, it's different. In Christ, we don't need to take retribution and revenge on others. In Christ, we can allow God to be able to, uh, to take over those anger, those bitterness, those feelings, because it is in Christ and what Christ did on the cross that allows us to not now take a step back in regards to having those uh, feelings of revenge and those feelings of retribution and allow God to do it. It is different from the standpoint of how we deal with the, within the church versus how God had to deal with it in regards to the Old Testament. So is it relevant? Absolutely. Had to be done part of God's plan. But in Christ as part of the church, yes, we now surrender all those things in the name of Jesus. So, so if I wanted to avenge a situation, it is still biblically okay to do it, but, but God wants you to forgive more so. I do believe that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, I think that the, the, what God is trying to uh, tell us within the body of Christ, within the New Testament, 
is that now that we are in Christ, then we need to be obedient to Christ in regard to what he teaches us right. and as I, part of the church. Right, and I, I bring that up as in um, last weekend or Friday or whatever, there was a big incident in Charlottesville, Virginia, and the, there was a young lady killed during that incident, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went to interview her mother, and her mother said something that was exactly what you're talking about today, because she said instead of having hate and uh, revenge in her heart, she said her Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, told her to forgive. Mm -hmm. That, I, I, I'm going to say, personally, if that was my child, I would really have a hard time right. doing that. I'm, I mean, I'm a human being. I love Jesus. I surrender him every day. But it would really take me a lot for me to be able to respond the way she did. I would respond the way she did. Right. I would forgive the perpetrators if they hurt my family. Mm -hmm. but, to, but in regard to my initial response, that yeah, would probably be, be a challenge. So that tells me that this, this woman understood mm -hmm who Christ is in her life. The power of Christ is more is larger than what the world, the evil of the world can do. And I commend her for yes, her faith. Absolutely. I commend her in tr the way she trusts God. And I think that's an awesome... I, I also heard another story very similar mm -hmm. about someone who got uh, one of their uh, kids, middle school kids. It was on one of those shootings at a school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they inter I don't understand why do they interview the parents right after right they're after, kidding yeah, me. Some time, but... It just doesn't seem right. And that that woman was also a, a true believer in Christ and she said the same comments that you know what I know where my child is right I right, know I they're that. in heaven I know I will be with them again mm -hmm. and I need I will forgive the perpetrator and I'll tell you those those that type of faith is is, is it's so commendable it, you know, it's, it's commendable really but it's really unbelievable it is you know it and is because in the flesh it is so hard to do yeah. but you know what she gets it mm -hmm. I need to get it. I need to learn from that person that, uh, that, uh, that that to be able to truly trust God in those horrible situations. Right. And to lose her daughter on such a oh my God incident, you know, you know, you you wouldn't have suspected. Well, you know, everybody keeps remembering. I know everybody says that we live in our bubble and we live our lives, but people got to realize uh, the human nature in our community is basically a wild wilderness. When you walk out there. You could be killed at any time. Oh my gosh! Especially in today's world. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you this. You know, you know, back 30, 40 years ago that I could talk about since mm -hmm. I was alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, know, you could walk down this. We we played in the streets till mm -hmm. mid not long right. in, into the evenings, and you know the threat of being hurt on the streets that night was very minimal. Mm -hmm. Today, you can't even walk out in the middle of the day without there's being a threat of somebody right. you know doing harm to you. Yes. Yeah, so it's a different world than yeah. today. It's, it's it really is a different world. world. And, you know, to have your children out there, even though this lady that got killed was, I think she was like 39 or something. Oh, no, she, she was geez. an older lady. Still, uh, that's maybe, young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's still young, fairly, and to lose your child at that stage for something that you didn't even realize was going on, it can happen to anybody, and this kind of ties into what I want to tell people. It's obvious that that's a praying mother, and they come from a very... Uh, Praying family, a oh, religious family, Christ-centered family. So yes. I'm I'm very certain that that daughter is saved. Oh, I, I by would Jesus Christ. So. Oh, there's you know? no question. And see, that's the way you need to look at something like this. I mean, I, I don't know if my initial reaction would be that. I, I would pray that I would have the strength to think that way. Mm -hmm. But she probably thought about it in her heart. Thought. I will be with my child again. There mm -hmm. is no doubt. The Bible is crystal clear mm -hmm. that 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 they will be reunited with family members mm -hmm. in heaven with God. So she had peace within her because knowing that she'll be with her child again. That is incredible it's faith. Awesome. It's awesome. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. That's where I strive to be mm -hmm. to have that type of faith and trust in God, no matter what situation. What situation come, is. Because I've been in terrible, terrible situations, most mostly financially, mm -hmm. not as much in regard to relationships with family. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been in very tough yeah. pickles mm -hmm. in your life. Back then, did I react like this woman, that 39 year old woman? I don't think I yeah. did. Right. So today, would I act differently? I pray that I would, because that's the faith that we need to have. Right. Um, it's a quick testimony for myself. When I was in Iran and Afghanistan, uh, when I first went to Desert Storm, being a 19, 18-year-old kid, uh, of course you're scared because you don't know what's going on. I joined the military for the educational benefits. But, um, that's, that's you know, next thing you know, I find myself in war, and I'm, and I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, what's going on, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the reality that I can be killed at any time. So after that experience, moving on to our current wars, 
uh, we would get younger people that would be in there all, you know, um, scared and stuff like that. And they, you know, and I, and I was very stoked. And it has nothing to do with, with John Wayne and being this, you know, Bravo type guy. Um, you make a pretty good John Wayne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I, I mean, I had a swagger about there me where I, where I was not concerned because I said, if anything happens to me, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. See, that's, so, that's, and that's, that's how right. I that's how I entered it. And I would always ask people, "Are you saved? Mm -hmm. Or are you, you know?" into church or religion, you know, and, you, and you're going to find a lot of people are, but their faith is kind of tested. And I Weak, said, yeah. and I'm not even judging anybody. I just said, you know, for me, if I got hit with a 20 millimeter round in my chest, I had, I said, I'm, I'm going to heaven. There's yeah. no doubt in my mind. You know, and I know there's probably people out there, Donovan, that's probably listening to this and maybe mocking me or right. mocking us, us yeah. Yeah. or maybe thinking you guys are stupid or you guys are crazy. There's mm -hmm. no way that anybody can do that. The one thing that I want to emphasize to our audience is the fact that the power in you will always be so much greater than the power of this evil world. world right. Always be. So when you say it is impossible for me to be able to react like that woman, woman. or react like you in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. you say that's impossible? No, it is no, not impossible. Not. You can mock me, you can think I'm crazy and all that. It's not because I know what lives within us. Mm -hmm. That power of God is strong. And yes, when we surrender to that power, we can have peace in times of huge tragedy. Mm -hmm. We can have that peace when we allow God to lead us. So if you're out there and you've got that one person or that one family or that one individual in your mind thinking, Pastor, you are crazy. crazy. I could never, ever forgive that individual. I want you to remember the prayer. You'll Go back it. and listen to that prayer and let God lead you in that situation. And let's see what God can do with it. Right. And absolutely. Uh, in my situation, came out there without a scratch. Oh man, that's a blessing. Yeah. That's Not a scratch. huge. That's a huge blessing from God. So, uh, but I, I, but I, I thought that was very. Uh, it's just, it's just kind of to me. It's, it's really, it's not weird, but it's just amazing how things that we're doing ties into sometimes than what's going on in the world itself. Oh, absolutely. That one lady. So, awesome. uh, getting back to your parable and how we should forgive, you know, stealing money that could be replaced. That this could be replaced, but to lose your child. And That's just, irreplaceable. And yeah, and just to say, hey, you know, I'm moving on. My child is with who they, who they're, you know, with God, and everything's going to be okay. I think it's an awesome uh, testimony to what you were saying about being a servant. Jesus did it for her, mm -hmm. and she did it for her. Well, in actuality, it's it's you know, in the parable, the huge debt with for God is 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 ridiculously high. Right. But in the parable, the, the debt with the fellow servant was very small. So I'm assuming it's maybe a, something, maybe a, a gossip or a lying mm -hmm. to, or mm -hmm. you know, because the amount that was displayed in that parable was not a large Large amount. amount. When we're talking about someone who kills your child, I mean, yeah. you're up there in the high high rent district right. when it comes to the, <laughs> yeah, the you know the the size of the of, of that um, of the, what needs to be forgiven, mm -hmm. and yet she still did. So yeah, she's a perfect model of what this parable is all about and what God expects from us. Because he's got our backs, he's got this. Right. Um, uh, moving on to the thing uh, in Paris last night, you wanted to. Tell oh us my about gosh! That. Yes, yes. Last night, um, Paris had their second annual uh, night of prayer. It was done at uh, Foss Field, over there, uh, right behind City Hall in the, in the downtown city of Paris. And I'll tell you, Donovan, it was it was it was amazing. I'm going to tell you why. It started off with some worship music, the Free Indeed Band in of Paris. They. Yeah sang about four or five songs on a stage. Mm -hmm. uh, the audience, we probably had about three, two to 300 people out there. Mm -hmm. But the energy in the field, you see, here's what makes it so awesome. We're in an open field. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're sitting ducks to anybody who wanted to come in there and, and, and um, do some harm or right, damage to us. At you. But you know what was so awesome, Donovan? You know, most of the people out in the audience mm -hmm. were believers. I mean, sure. they came from the churches, and there was like nine pastors who prayed, in which I was one of them. And each one of those pastors did an amazing job in really putting their heart and soul into their prayers. But the neat part is that I was, I'm the type of guy that's kind of, I kind of wander around looking around. And I saw at the Foss Field, I saw a bunch of people playing basketball. I saw a family just sitting there in the corner, you know, like, like having a little, just having a little gathering together. And these people started walking over. And they just, I, they heard the music. That's they so probably fun. heard some of the prayers. Mm -hmm. They thought, they saw the commotion of what was going on. And I started watching these people as they slowly came over. 
And then, you know, I was thinking, okay, they'll come over, they'll say, oh, geez, it's one of those prayer things. Yeah, I'm not interested. No. Revival. But they didn't. They, they stayed. stayed. They stayed, and I was watching them. I just kept watching them because I'm thinking, okay, are they actually going to pray? Are they going to mock? Are right. they going to just, you know, just yeah, clown, smirk, and clown or smirk or anything? No, they prayed. And it's like, that's what it's all no. about. It's all about, you know what? We, it's, this city of Paris needs God. Well, guess what? The city of Marino right. Valley yes. and every other city yeah. in this nation needs God. So, I, yeah, I thought that, that the... The way it was organized, I, I want to commend uh, Councilwoman Rita Rogers who put it all together. It was really, really well done and it was well received. And like I mentioned before to you, Donovan, if uh, God blesses us to, for us to be able to plant our church here in Marino Valley on the southeast end, Reflections Church in Marino Valley, that is one of my priorities is to get these pastors. I mean, there were some dynamic pastors in Paris, in Paris, mm -hmm. but we have dynamic pastors here in Marino Valley. And one of my goals would be to gather up these men and women of God and do the exact same, same thing, thing and here. bring this city back to Jesus. Not relying on, on government, not relying on businessmen, relying completely on God. And that's that was what happened last night. And that's what we need. But that's, uh, uh, that, that's a great, great testimony. But it also goes to show you... Um, and we're not bragging or anything like that. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. I think it's a great thing. Um, I'm very sure a lot of pastors are doing So if you didn't have the chance to uh, see it uh, uh, last week, just check it out this week, and I'll tell you, you'll not be disappointed. It was doing this, and how do you do this? And I really enjoy doing it. Now you know why I thank Donovan every single week for what he does, because I don't want to do any of that. He does, and he did a plug in for me. If you did not have the opportunity to see last Tuesdays or the last week's podcast, some of the questions I get from other pastors that I've run across, and they say, well, you know, I want to do what you guys are doing. I said, well, that's great. Hey, that's that's awesome. You know, how do you do it? And I'll give them some advice. I'll say, hey, here's what you got to do, whatever. And, you know, um, you know, they're excited about it, but they're like, ah, that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, it, <laughs> is is it? it is a it lot is of work. It is a lot of work, yes. But I told them, I said, it's it really is. not the video. Even though, that, you know, it's because people are visual. They want to see what you're doing. They want to see uh, what we're doing. And actually, before I forget, I always got to remember and tell people, when, you, when you're looking at us on video, what you're actually seeing us do is a podcast, and the podcast is going right into his tablet, which is going on the Internet all over the world, which is really good. Uh, the video, what you're seeing me and Pastor Don in the background and everything like here, what you're seeing is it's just a podcast. So we're not really doing vi – we're doing video and kind of interacting. We just want to show you. Uh, how we do the show, and we got our mics, and you know, Pastor Don has his shirt, and he's very casual. I might throw a jacket on, whatever. But we decided to put the video on because, in addition to just doing the podcast, Pastor Don wants wants to get these numbers, and 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 reach out to people as as any way he could. So by putting a video up, you're going to get a few a few people yeah. here, here and there. Yeah, so. you're, and you're absolutely right. And, and like I said, Donovan and I working together as a team has just been amazing. Uh, I am extremely interested in the numbers, not because the numbers are going to produce any type of monies for me. Right. The numbers produce for me that the reach is getting out. The message is getting out. That's what I'm concerned about. So a lot of pastors ask me, well, gosh, that sounds good. I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it. You guys, it looks like fun. It's a commitment. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. work. I mean, you, we write these podcasts, right. we, we edit, edit we produce, we have to distribute, then right. you got to share. It's a process, but I'll tell you this, it is so rewarding when yes. I know that 15, 20,000 people are being lifted up and edified by the podcast, by the video, video. by However, the whole the production. Mm -hmm. They're being built up. Oh my gosh, that's the joy that I, I get, and I know that Donovan gets from why we do this. So if our other pastors are interested, I think that's awesome. I right. wish you well, wish well, but it is a work. lot of work. It's coming and you got to be consistent. That's what I was going to get to. When the pastor asked me, he was saying, well, you know what, you know, what's the key? It isn't the video. It isn't the podcast. It's the consistency of doing the show every day on that day that you do. And Pastor Don does it every day mm -hmm. in his uh, two minute podcast. 
but um, it's the consistency of doing it every Tuesday, and uh, I look forward to every Tuesday. I mean, even, I I, even though a pastor Ron wakes me up because I oversleep, <laughs> yeah. but I don't mind getting up because I know this is the day that we're going to do something great. I'll tell you this. You know, I, I look forward to Tuesday not only to see Donovan because he's a joy to be around, but I enjoy the idea of getting the message out. No. I'll tell you, you know, 10 years ago, if you had told me that I could, we could be evangelizing to 10, 15,000 people just the way we're doing mm -hmm. it now, I'd have laughed and said, there's no way. Now that we have this opportunity and God has opened up this door with this relationship and what with, with this equipment, we're going to take advantage of it. We're not going to stop until God takes us home. We're going to continue yeah. to spread the message of Jesus to anyone who can listen. Right. So uh, some of my advice to a lot of the pastors that are watching what we're doing and seeing what we're doing, the key is consistency of doing it. Pastor Don is here every Tuesday. We have our time. We do it. Uh, I'm getting better on the editing, so now I can get it out, hope in a day, which is really good, because it does take a little while. But, you know, I try to get inventive and put some nice oh, stuff in the does. background. He does a great job. <laughs> and, um, great job. You know, like I said, I enjoy it. I don't know how to do it, but um, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Hey, our whole key is to get the, the message out there, so, because we don't want anybody to, to go to the Lord one day and just say, well, I never knew, I never had an opportunity. We've got you on social media, mm -hmm. we've got you on a podcast, and we've got you on YouTube and you know video, so now you know where to go. Well, that's the other thing about social media. You know, A lot of people look at social media and say there's so much evil mm -hmm. in regards to social media, internet, and there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I mean, the pornographic yeah. numbers have just skyrocketed since internet has come in play. I mean, yeah. a lot of, I mean, the postings of some of them are so evil. But I look at the flip side, because of all this technology, because of all this, now we have an opportunity to spread the gospel even more mm -hmm. and even more consistent because of internet and all this. So, yeah, if we utilize the technology for what God has given us for, for these purposes, then social media is awesome. awesome. It really, yeah. it actually it's is. in the right way. I want to go. I only got a couple more yeah. minutes left. I want to. I want to uh, just emphasize one last thing in regards to this parable because we're leaving this parable. I'm starting a new parable next week. I'm going to surprise you, so you have to tune in to see what it is. But um, I want to talk about the one thing that in regards to this parable, in regard to the, um, I call it the mental prison and not forgiving others. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are thinking, gosh, you know, I I read that parable. I never understood how, what, what does that mean that if I don't forgive somebody, I'm, I'm not saved anymore, or I'm going to hell? It doesn't mean any of those things. What it means is, is that when we are not allowing ourselves to forgive, then we lose the fellowship that we have with God. Because God demands forgiveness because He has forgiven us. So what that does is, think about it for a second. When you have a, a, heart, a, heart, have a heart of bitterness and anger towards an individual or a family or somebody else, it festers inside of you. It, it, it eats you alive. It consumes you because you can't, you're so angry and so frustrated with that person that that's all you think about. That's the mental prison that they're talking about. It's not that you're going to any type of jail or you're not going to go to heaven. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with your relationship with God every single day because again you can't be blessed by God if we're harboring so much resentment and anger within our hearts. So I just want to make sure that you all understand that prison from that parable is that is the idea of basically being just mentally consumed by the by the uh, the act that was against you and the forgiveness releases that anger releases that bitterness and allows you to have fellowship back with the Lord. Wow. Yeah, something to think about. Yeah. Um, but moving forward, uh, we're still going to working. We're still working on getting the church thing going. Yeah, we um, we're hoping to get a meeting, hopefully yeah. with the the, the, the yeah. city planners this month. There's been so many delays, and it's it's unfortunate. But in God's time, it is in God's time. And again, in my former life, I, I did a lot of uh, works with developers and, and city planners and all that. This is part of the process, mm -hmm. and I know that it is. It's the frustrating part, but it's part <laughs> of the process. But we're still going forward. We're, it's still it's still positive to get this thing approved through November. The golf course with the clubhouse and you know with all the uh, amenities that goes with that. So if that still happens, we're still looking at getting the clubhouse renovated and the parking lot renovated so that we'll be ready for services in about the first quarter of January. So things are still going as planned. It delays because of the system, but you know what? We are still, everything going the same way. I, you know, what's not nice too about these podcasts is a lot of people ask me, well, where's your church? I'm ready to go to your church. I want to go to your right, church. And right. it's so hard for me to say, 
I have a church in Paris that's not in Merino Valley, right. and we will have in Merino Valley right. in the first quarter, but bear with us. We're not going to stop these podcasts and the devotionals, so you're like you're with us right now, even though it's not in a church building, but everything is still on plan, hopefully for the first quarter. So if any updates come in well, regards to where the progress is, we will make sure we keep you keep informed, informed in all of that. Um, like I said, you're doing a great job, Pastor Don. The numbers are solid. As a matter of fact, they're getting better and better and better, especially with the, uh, the video show. I hope I don't... Uh, take too many people from the podcast to the video show, but either way you get oh, it. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, no, either I, way you get it, get it. <laughs> you know, it's but, funny. I don't. I. I, I hope that, that's great. If they love the yeah. video portion, you know what? That video portion's got power too. So no, that's fine. That's so uh, we're doing great. So all these other pastors, like you said, having a revival in Moreno Valley and getting you all you pastors on the same page. We're gonna do it, Moreno Valley. One day. One day. We're coming, we're and we're coming to bring Moreno Valley back to Jesus. I am telling you that now. So if you wanna. I'm just going to close out in prayer, and uh, thank you all again for uh, being part of the Pastor Don with Donovan, the weekly podcast. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and Lord, thank you again for this opportunity that you have given <clears throat> to Donovan and I to produce uh, this uh, pod weekly podcast show, Lord. I just pray that every he uh, ears that hear and every eyes that see will take this parable to heart and recognize that they have that anger, bitterness against for uh, needing to forgive. Lord, that they will surrender that to you and allow you, Lord, that power within them to be to overcome this and they'll be able to forgive and then leave and live in the peace and harmony that only you can give. Lord, again, I want to pray for all the victims of these senseless crimes, uh, Lord, uh, in all parts of this world, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that I pray for peace, but I realize, Lord, there will never be peace until the Prince of Peace comes back, and that is you, Lord. Lord, we honor you with everything we do, Lord. We praise and give you glory in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you next week. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Peter, son of Zebedon, <clears throat> of thee is owed one hundred pence. Andrew, son of Mark, of thee is owed one talent. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. I have not with which to pay. Then he shall be sold. wife, and children, and all that he hath, and payment shall be made. Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. It is impossible. In a thousand lifetimes he could never repay this debt. Zacchaeus. Yes. 
all is forgiven. <laughs> Let me see him. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Philip! Ah, pay me that thou owest! My lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Take him away. No! No! Have pity on me! Have pity on me! So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Zacchaeus is here. The ten thousand talents are ready, my lord. Quickly, quickly. Good. O oh, thou wicked! Gave thee all that debt. Because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? Even as I had pity on thee. And his lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if he from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses.